Hi, I'm Jackson Crawford. I'm an Old Norse specialist, previously teaching at several universities and now presenting for free on YouTube to anyone who'd like to learn about Norse language myth, runes, etc., and supported by my generous community of Patreon supporters. Today, I have a short topic for you. I want to talk about the name Odin. And what I mean is not, not all of Odin's names. I have a whole video about that where I read through the part of Grimness Mall where he gives his names and try to explain the ones that can be explained. I mean the actual name Odin, because I see some pretty far-fetched ideas about what this means, when in fact its etymology looks pretty straightforward. The crux of the issue is that you have three homonyms in Old Norse that are all Oether. Now, homonyms or homophones are not, uh, you know, unusual things from an English perspective, right? How many people struggle with there, there, there today? But Oether, Oether, Oether in Old Norse uh, could give us three pretty different explanations for Odin, which of course is derived from one of these roots. So, you have the word Oether, which means mad. Same duality as in English, crazy or angry. And this is a pretty frequent adjective. It also has uh, derivative words that are reasonably frequent. For example, there's Uthi, which is like madness, craziness. And it's notable that in the 1070s, when Adam of Bremen is talking about the Norse temple at Uppsala in Sweden, he translates Odin's name into Latin as furor. All right, this seems like a pretty good explanation. We have someone from outside the culture who explicitly uh, understands, probably because it's been explained to him by someone who does speak Old Norse, that this name has something to do with anger, furor. And we have a reasonably common word, so one that it's not strange to look for occurrences of. Then we have two really rare words. There's other in the sense of mind, spirit, or character. Uh, this is from the same root as uh, a more common word, edli or idli, which is like one's nature or character. But other is not very common in this sense. We see it, uh, for example, in the poem Voluspa, but that's a rare and poetic occurrence in a poem that has quite a few rare and poetic words. And then there's other meaning song or poem or ode also pretty rare um just just about as rare as can be for an old norse word and still listed in the dictionary um you wouldn't look for this in the eddas that i can ever recall uh certainly i've seen it in some early christian literature but um not very much outside of that so it makes a lot of sense that out of these three homonyms that all share this root shape, Oth. Odin's name comes from the Mad One. He is, after all, a figure who creates madness in his berserkers. He is fairly mad himself. And even though this probably isn't exactly what its true etymological derivation is, an Old Norse speaker could have easily seen it as Othi, which would be the weak masculine nominative singular form of that adjective Other plus in meaning the, so it would simply mean the mad one, the mad guy. And that fits his personality pretty well. I'd also point out that whatever your particular stance on this is, if I ask you how the weather is in English, you're going to assume that I'm talking about, you know, how windy it is, how cloudy it is. You're not going to assume that I'm asking you about your castrated ram, right? Even though there is a word weather that sounds like weather. 
you know, Occam's razor suggests that without a really good reason otherwise, we ought to assume that of multiple homonyms, the one that is reasonably frequent is the one that's meant. And I think that's true of Old Norse as much as of, as of English. Well, from beautiful Colorado, let me wish you all the best.